How's it going guys? I'm your host Karban Gaming. Welcome back to a very special Adventure Quest video and for today's video we will be looking at my top 20 tips and tricks for new and returning players. So whether you are a new player who just discovered the game yesterday or a returning player coming back to the game 10 years later, you will surely find something useful inside of this video. So without further ado, let us jump right into the tips. So the most frequently asked question that I get from either new or returning players is what is the best build in the game? and my short answer to that is that there is no best build in the game. Sure, there are some builds that do stuff a little bit more efficiently or a little bit more better compared to other builds, but that is not to say that other builds are not viable at all. A lot of people are looking to play the meta builds, but sometimes meta builds don't really suit your play style. You know, everybody likes to play and enjoy the game differently, and I highly recommend every one of you guys to go ahead and check out YouTube videos, the wiki, the discord, the forums, you know, there's so many different places whereby you can see different builds from different other people, okay, ranging from your beastmasters, your backlashers, your rangers, your hybrids, your majors, your warriors, there's so many different builds inside the game and I highly encourage every one of you guys to go ahead and experiment and try all the different builds, find one that you really really like to play around with and stick with the build that you enjoy the most, okay, because chances are that build is probably still a viable build inside of the game, whether or not it is meta. The next tip that I have is elemental courage, this is so very important to have a weapon, shield, armor, and maybe even a pet and a spell for all of the standard 8 elements in your active inventory. This ensures that you'll be prepared for anything that is thrown your way. Also, if you have the extra slot for it, I would highly recommend you guys to get a compression weapon that either gives you the void damage or the harm damage so that you are able to deal with monsters outside of the standard 8 elements monsters like Vorpazard that don't have resistances to the standard 8 elements that is when your harm and your void damage will come in useful if you can afford it then of course uh, pets and spells you would definitely want to have one of ev all of the standard 8 elements as well there are some specialized builds that do not make use of all of the standard 8 elements but those are very far and few in between and I highly recommend every single one of you guys to get elemental coverage for all of the eight standard elements in your regular gameplay. This is an area of the game that is often overlooked by many people but a lot of people actually do not realize that you get five free ally assists per day. Okay and ally assists are basically auto hit skills that have a different element on top of dealing uh, not only good damage but they also come with their own very special effect. Okay you can use this to get out of sticky situations like a tough boss fight. That's what is most commonly used for and one little synergy that I really like to use is using the Zorbeck ally assist to turn your foe into an undead and then using the Arctic's ally assist to go ahead and you know deal void damage to your foes because most uh, monsters have a weakness against void damage and this will allow you to deal a large amount of damage. <laughs> Spend your goal wisely before you reach the max level and this is very important because at the max level you will need a lot of gold to buy your gear. The jump from non-max level gear to max level gear is absolutely huge and where at any level below max level you can usually get away with using items that are 10 or maybe even 20 levels that are below your regular level you know if you're just using it for regular questing or if you're just using it to grind a specific monster you almost don't want to replace your gear every single five levels because it is quite taxing on gold for no reason whatsoever like the difference that you see between five levels of gear is not really going to be super huge or super game changing sure you will need to buy new gear every once in a while but don't do it that often because you don't really need to and as a general rule of thumb I would not recommend buying any master crafter items before you reach the max level because you'll need to redo the entire quest to get the max level uh, master crafter item and on top of that you will be replacing gear very very often so just get any standard gear and like I mentioned in my tip before as long as you have good coverage of the standard 8 elements you should be good to go Always, always check the official info subs first before you buy any item and this is especially true for Z token and golden gift box items. Unless you're just a huge whale who buys everything, I highly recommend every one of you guys to go to the official battle on forums, wait for the info subs to come out and then see if that item is actually worth buying for your build. Alternatively, you can also check out my YouTube channel. I post weekly videos and cover almost every single item inside of the game. I don't buy all of the items that come out but I do go through all of them. 
okay alternatively you can also hop on to the different discords like the fanmate discords like the gox tavern or the gox chin or the official ae discord whereby you have other pros or whales who have already bought the items they will give their opinions on whether the items are good whether the items are worth buying for your specific build and this will ensure that you do not waste any gold and more importantly you do not waste any z tokens or a golden gift fox getting an item that you will probably not be satisfied with Ballyhoo is a place inside the game that allows you to earn free gold and if you're lucky, free Z tokens every day just by watching a simple ad. Okay, usually these ads are pretty short and you can just leave it on there while you watch another different like video on another screen or something like that. Let the ad run through and you'll basically get a free amount of gold every single day. Okay, this is especially useful at the lower levels though at the max level, this uh, amount of gold is pretty insignificant. But at the lower levels, this is probably the fastest way to farm and to earn gold to get enough gold to replace your gear as compared to battling with monsters okay and like i said if you're lucky you can even get a little bit of z tokens out of this way Another even better method and unfortunately this method only comes around during the month of April when the April Fool celebrations are going on is you can use the lazy quest okay so for most people you can go to today's event click on the spinning local hit and then go to 2017 lazy quest okay you can also access this quest from your April Fool's painting though it is disabled after the April Fool celebrations are over every single year so you can't abuse the painting even if you have it all year round so this only uh, this event is only available during the month of April and when the April Fool celebrations are going on. So once you reach inside of Lazy Quest, it's very easy. All you do is just leave your computer on and it will stock up go and it will stock up EXP for you if you are not already max level. Okay, you can leave your computer there for quite a long amount of time and you'll just keep stocking up go and EXP. That your respective go and EXP cap will still be in place you cannot go over your daily cap but this is an even better way of getting exp and go every day just by basically doing nothing during the month of april Adventurers have a daily Z token cap of 25 tokens per day and for Guardians and X Guardians this amount is increased to 50. So every single day by battling any monster you have a chance to gain a little bit of tokens all the way until you reach your maximum cap. If you have already reached your EXP and or gold cap for the day you will no longer be able to get more Z tokens from battles. Okay on top of farming Z tokens daily during the summer and winter season every single year, there will also be this thing called the donation contest where your whales will actually donate a large amount of gold and Z tokens in order to stand a chance to win some very limited edition prizes. Okay, by winning and saving a battle on what all of your characters every single day, you'll stand a chance to be entered into this pool for these gold and the Z tokens to be redistributed. For gold, you can win up to a maximum of 100 million gold from a donation and for Z tokens, you can win up to a maximum of 5,000 Z tokens from a single donation and all you have to do is basically just win and save a battle every single day and that's how easy it is. I highly recommend everyone to create 6 characters to do this. Even if you don't win the stuff on your main character, you can spend the amount that you want on your sub character and then put it in your shared vault and transfer it to your main character. On top of this donation contest, there are also certain other contests like the back to school contest whereby you have a chance to win a special item just by logging in and saving a battle during the month of i believe it's june or july when this happens if you are looking to spend your z tokens on either z token items or on golden gift foxes now highly recommend every one of you guys to wait until the last week of November before spending your Z tokens because that's when the Black Friday celebrations come around. Okay, Black Friday celebrations every year means that we get half price on all token items including golden gift boxes. So you basically get the double the value of what you are spending and if you can afford to wait if the item isn't going to become rare inside of like a golden gift box if the item is like a permanent Z token item then definitely wait until the Black Friday celebrations before you go ahead and purchase the item this means that you get double value for your z tokens and you will be able to buy more stuff with the same amount of tokens to add on to the previous point if any of you guys are looking to buy z token packages then i highly recommend you guys to wait until there is a period of sale before you purchase your z tokens usually these sales give up to extra 25 percent z token on some packages and in the past there was a time whereby they gave up to 50 percent more z tokens though we haven't seen that sale return in a long time who knows it might just return in the newer future okay so right now sales give up to 25 percent more z tokens and currently there's been a sale that's been 
been running since last year. I expect the sale to get extended even more during the summer period and maybe extended another time during the winter period. But yeah, always wait for a sale before you buy Z token packages if the items that you want to get are not going rare because that's when you can get more Z tokens with the same amount of money buy a house and you can get a house from clicking on the travel map sailing east sailing southeast and then going to Duran school of thought and temple of hope city of Duran. okay on the right hand side here there is a shop called the house shop and memorial shop click on it click on the large building go inside and from betty higgins click on buy home or guards okay here you'll be taken to the house shop there are other houses inside the game that are not found here namely the uh, neko mansion estate okay you can get that from the neko haven but i will not go through that the cheapest house in the game costs 188 tokens you can get one with estate as well that will allow you to buy other house items and the other house items are generally good for gaining extra gold and exp during wars but if you are not a huge wheel or if you don't have a lot of tokens to spend then you can just get the cheapest house 488 tokens and why do i say buy the house is because the number one reason you want to buy a house is because it is the best investment for your z tokens if you are a patient player if you are in it for the long run then buying a house and selling it many years later will give you a large increase of your z tokens and that is because you will be able to sell your house for an even greater amount of z tokens than when you first bought it for the interest rate of your house will increase every single week and the interest rate is the same for all houses whether it's an expensive house or whether it's a cheap house the percentage of interest that you earn from each house will be the same okay if you are patient enough and you wait like one or two years before selling your house then you'll be able to make a large amount of z tokens just from buying and reselling houses on top of that you also get a bunch of extra inventory slots depending on the house that you buy and if you buy an estate then you'll have extra uh, estate plots whereby you'll be able to build some of the estate buildings that gives you extra go and exp during wars to add on to my previous point if you already own a house with an estate then go to your house all right go to your estate grounds and then in the bottom right hand corner of your screen you'll see an estate shop go inside it and there will be your some shop house items that you can buy scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see this building called the museum building yes it does cost 3000 tokens but hear me out first this is a fantastic building basically if you are a guardian and having this building not even level at all you can receive one free golden gift box for every month you are active and by active they mean winning and saving a battle every single month that's right just one for the entire month you'll receive one free golden gift box every single month and if you level this building all the way up then you can get up to two free golden gift boxes every single month and I'll explain further in my next tip on why these two free golden gift boxes are so important and so good. Now, you guys are probably wondering, how are the two free golden gift boxes actually so good? Because my luck with those gift boxes are usually crap. And yes, I hear you because my luck with those gift boxes are crap as well, getting only useless common boxes. But here is where you are mistaken. Those two common boxes are not useless at all okay on the battle on home page over here on the left hand side of the screen there's this button called manage your account and this part of the, of, uh, the game i realized that not many people actually know about so here i'm actually going to pause it first while i go ahead and log in now once you are logged in on the left hand side of the screen here you can see this button called account called character list so you want to click on it and then select the character that you want which is most likely going to be your main character and here you can see this little button here called go price swap click on it and here we are okay many people actually do not know that this even existed but you can actually trade 25 common gift boxes to get one rare box and you can trade 10 rare gift boxes to get one ultra rare box that's right every single gift box that you get is actually important and helps to go towards your rare and even your ultra rare gift boxes so no golden gift box is actually worthless at all you could have thousands of common gift boxes and you can convert them all into rares or even ultra rare gift boxes and this is why every single golden gift box in the game is so important and you really want to treasure every single one of them 
Now inside of the same account management page, before I click on the gold price swap button, there are two different buttons here called the upgrade inventory and downgrade inventory buttons. Downgrade inventory, I don't really see a lot of people using it much unless you want to transfer an item from your main character onto a lower level sub character for him or her to use. But we will be going through the upgrade inventory button. Okay, so upgrade inventory, once you click on it, you can use this area to go ahead and upgrade any of your non-master crafter items, seasonal rare items or items that have already gone permanently rare. Let's say you have bought a lower level version of the item but you are now at a higher level. You can use this area to go ahead and upgrade those items into a higher level version. On top of that, you can also convert these items into their different forms. Like say for weapons, you can change it from melee form to range form to magic form. These will only work for certain items, okay? And all the items that will work with, they are listed out here. Any item that is not listed here, it will not work with, okay? And most of the time, Mastercraft items will not work. You will need to replay the entire Mastercraft set quest in order to buy a higher level version of the Mastercraft set items. That being said, it also works for armors, for shields, for spells, for pets, and for miscellaneous items. So if you don't want to replay an entire quest for one specific item, or let's say one of your items have already gone rare and you have no way of upgrading, then this is the area where you can use to go ahead and check if you can actually upgrade the item here or for a little bit of gold if you just want to convert your forms. Some may cost a little bit more than others, but if you're max level, this amount of gold shouldn't be too much for you. There are certain times in battle, especially for boss battles, whereby you may want to go first so that you can either set up your strategy more effectively or conserve your health, MP, and your SP. In order to go first, there are a few different tips and tricks that you can use. The first of which is obviously have more points in your luck stat. As you guys can see here, luck stat gives you a percentage chance of attacking first in battle. Chances are, if your luck is higher than your enemy, then you are more likely to go first. On top of the luck stat, if you do not want to retrain your build, you can also go to to the travel map here and go to the assassin class over here okay and buy one of the assassin gears okay so you can go to the assassin shop click on donate and here one of the armors whispering raymond this armor will give you extra initiative allowing you to go first in battle now the very last technique that you can use to go first in battle is by going to travel map going to granomore over here to granomore And then we'll want to go in. Okay, so just continue clicking. And because I said I wasn't, then once you get in, go to the potion shop. You will need to complete the rescue loot. Critia uh, quest before you are able to do this. So once you have rescued her, and then you can go to potions, potion list, and you will need to complete all of the uh, initial potions before you reach this potion. This is the very last potion called the ambush potion. Once you have completed all the uh, previous potions, gather all of their ingredients and done so for ambush potion. You can click on ambush potion and you can buy a potion for either gold or Z tokens. I highly recommend everyone to just spend their gold and not spend Z tokens on this. And once you buy this potion, you can see here for a small amount of gold, you will get this effect all the way until uh, you log out. So you get your initiative until you log out and this will give you a greater chance to go first inside of battles. Always have a healthy amount of SP readily available at the end of every two battles because you never know when the next battle might be a boss battle and you might need your SP to set up your strategy. Alternatively, you it may also be another stat roll and I know this is not applicable to the older stat rolls but for newer stat rolls, you can actually use SP to go ahead and defy the will of the dice allowing you to win the stat roll instead of doing all of the battles or watching the cutscene all over again until you win the dice roll. The next tip that I have for you guys is actually an advanced trick used by warmongers also known as gold lining. Gold lining is basically when you run away from monsters that give you a high gold reward and instead fight only the monsters that give you a low amount of gold rewards. Now warmongers actually do this so that they are able to get in more number of uh, war, war kills per day because the amount of war kills that you get every single day stop counting after you reach your daily gold cap. And you might be wondering how is this actually useful to the casual player or like the new or the returning player because there is a variation of this trick that you can use instead of looking at the amount of gold you can actually look at the amount of EXP as well and actually get very very close to your gold or EXP cap 
after, once you are super close to your goal and EXP cap, like maybe let's say you're a thousand goal or a thousand EXP away from your cap, you want to fight the sh best possible uh, highest EXP or highest goal giving monster that you can for the your final battle of the day and this will allow you to overcap the maximum amount that you get every single day if you really want to optimize your leveling or your goal farming. So you guys might be wondering, okay, I really want to use the previous tip that you gave. How exactly do I know what is my daily EXP or my daily goal cap for the day? And it's really simple to find out. All you have to do is go to this page, aq-char-info.firebaseapp.com slash question mark ID equals whatever your character ID is. Alternatively, you can just go to aq char dash uh, info.firebaseapp.com and just press go and then enter your character ID in order to see what is your daily EXP and goal cap for the day. On top of that, you also get to see a bunch of your other uh, important character stats, what kind of quests your character has completed on this page. So it is a very, very useful page. I'll put the link to this page down in the description below. Alternatively, if you are using NRVP's third-party adventure quest launcher, there is also a shortcut for you to go ahead and access this page. Right, so we're almost at the end now and the next tip that I have for you guys is to use NIVP's third party launcher for Adventure Quest. Okay, you guys can go ahead and check out my video on how to play Adventure Quest in 2021 video. I will put the link to the video in the card in the top right hand corner of the screen right now. Okay, inside of this video, I showcase to you guys a few different methods which you guys can use to play Adventure Quest inside of 2021. But my personal favorite and recommendation has to be using NIVP's third party unofficial Adventure Quest launcher. Inside of the video, I do go through uh, how exactly do you get his launcher and some of the other features that you get from his launcher okay a quick uh, little TLDR here his launcher does give you slight performance improvements over the stock Arctic's launcher on top of that you also get a whole bunch of features that you do not get with the stock Arctic's launcher so I highly recommend you guys to go ahead and check out his launcher for an improved experience when playing adventure quest <laughs> And the second last tip that I have for you guys is to use the Adventure Quest Wiki. Okay, and that is adventurequestwiki.fandom.com slash wiki slash adventurequestwiki underscore wiki. I know right now there is a little bit of issues with the uh, Adventure Quest Wiki fandom because they recently just migrated to a new ver version of their platform, but most of the guides here are still very up to date and a huge number of stuff is still working on the website. If you're just looking for like equipments guide, there is something for everyone here as you guys can see. Okay. And in the past, you used to be able to uh, filter. Unfortunately, the filter is sort of down right now, but you can still use it to go ahead and view what are the best items for your build and the best items uh, that you should get at endgame. Now, all of these uh, equipment guides are for endgame players. So if you're not endgame player yet, then this is a the equipment guide may not be uh, something for you but here you can check out the bunch of other builds that people use okay and the equipment that you need for them there are some uh, guides for bossing as well and on top of that there is also guides for goal farming token farming on what you should use to best gain exp and go for your level <laughs> And my last tip for you guys is to join the AQ community, whether it is the official battle on forums, whether it is the AQ subreddit, whether it's the official Arctic Games Discord or any of the other fan-made AQ discords. The staff hangs out on all of these platforms. On top of that, many other like-minded AQ players also hang out on all of these platforms. You can learn a lot of stuff from them and you can also partake in different discussions with them through the use of these platforms. So that is going to do it for the video guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video and whether you're a new player, a returning player or just a veteran player that have learned something new, please feel free to let me know down in the comments below or maybe if I've left out any other tips or tricks that you'd like to share with your fellow AQ players then you can feel free to leave those down in the comments below as well. And as always if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and of course subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more of such future content. Till the next time, I'm your host Corban Gaming. Peace out.